Hello, hi everyone, and welcome to Community Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, here we are at the Labor Day weekend. We have a lot of interesting things to share with you um, this show. So uh, have a pencil and paper handy uh, because there's a, quite a bit to write down. And um, Eileen, I can't believe it, but Labor Day. Is... And back to school season? I just can't believe it. Yeah, for all Where the. Where did the summer go? <laughs> for all the students going back to school, we wish you a very successful school year. Definitely. And the teachers, too. Yep. <laughs> the yes. staff. All the staff. At That's school. for sure, <laughs> since we both did it for many years. Yes, we did. And we, we remember well. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, well, but I'm sure they'll have, do a good job and it'll be a great oh, year. I'm sure going to start the show with one announcement we want to share with you. Um, we just want to remind you uh, that the Harwich United Methodist Church um, at One Church Street in Harwich, um, the new service time begins now. Sundays will be 930 starting on September 8th. So that's right around the corner. Uh, starting September 8th, the new service time will be 9.30 uh, uh, on Sundays. And if you need more information, it's 508-432-3734. So uh, we usually send that out every fall and every spring yes. Yes, when they do. switch their uh, times. Mm -hmm. And um, our first spot on this show this week is another visit to the Har Harwich Conservation Trust where Michael sat down uh, with Tyler Maycath. Uh, they sat down with Dinah to bring us up to date. So let's take a look. Hello. We're here with the Harwich Conservation Trust with Michael Locke and Tyler Maycath for uh, their monthly update. And very excited to hear about uh, all kinds of things that have been going on since last time we met, uh, including the tornado cleanup continuing, mm -hmm. and a few other yeah. items that I know you want to talk about. So Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us, and thank um, the rest of the staff, um, uh, Jamie and Caleb, uh, here at the team at Community Resource. We're, we're really glad to be here. Um, yes. And, yeah, and uh, uh, there's been continued trail cleanup at a variety of conservation destinations. Mm -hmm. around town. Tyler's really been leading that effort with a, a very dedicated group of volunteers. Yeah. Um, so he's going to give us an update from that tornado, um, the, tor the tornado impacts. Yeah, so um, as people know, the impacts were varied around town and depending on where you live. Some people had lots of damage and others had relatively few or none. Um, we were so fortunate, of course, that no one was killed or uh, severely injured, to my knowledge, anyways. Um, but some of the conservation properties did suffer a lot of damage. Uh, so as folks know, Harwich Center had a lot of damage. Um, and the Island Pond area in particular, there was a tremendous amount of tree damage um, to my eye. It does look like a tornado touched down there. So um, there's a shot of me doing some chainsaw work. Um, so, uh, myself and a variety of different volunteers from all different ages um, have been coming out and doing work with me out there um, at Island Pond. There's a good shot of the group from a couple weeks ago. Um, so many of the trees that are down that were down on the trail have been cleared at this point. Uh, there were probably about mm, 20 or, or 30. <laughs> that we had to clear so there was a lot of work to do that's an example of what we were looking at all kinds of stuff like that I wanted to ask uh, I, I imagine there were hangers as we have come to talk about them in the past yes. month lots of hangers and I'm wondering were there many uh, hanging branches that you needed to get up to and were difficult to reach in that area yeah, so uh, there, there are still many hangers um, on some trails. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would ask that people exercise a lot of caution if they're going to go hiking. Mm -hmm. Probably don't do it when the winds are over 15 miles an hour. Cause 15 th miles, yeah, yes. Because okay. things could be falling. Um, right. So just be aware that's, of your surroundings. Yep. Uh, however, uh, Amy Uzowski and I connected with... Um, a veterans group, Team Rubicon. They do disaster relief all around the country. Um, they're wonderful people. Um, they were here immediately following the tornado, mm -hmm. um, doing cleanup in some private residences. 
Um, so they have some pretty skilled sawyers, um, you know, people who operate mm -hmm. chainsaws. Mm -hmm. They will be coming at some point this fall to help us out with cutting some of the more dangerous trees that are hanging over trails. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, you can see the work is ongoing on all the main streets, too. I mean, wherever mm -hmm. you drive still, they're working hard, and it looks like it's going to be a while yet before they have it all done. Yeah. Mm. If ever, of course. It well, could be just some of it will take care of itself. It'll get done. Another. Yeah. Right. Eventually. But, yeah, that's a lot of work, and it's great that you've gotten volunteers and also the team Rubicon mm -hmm. yeah. to help out. Wonderful. At the same time all that's been going on, we've been getting Cornelius Pond Woodlands ready to open to the public, so that should be happening very soon. Mm. And how did that fare? Did that need extra grooming because of the tornado as well? Yes, it did. It did, yeah. yes. Uh, <laughs> we were poised to actually open it, and then the tornado yeah. touched down, and then we had to pause. Right. while we address the issues. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Mm. Well, good, but you're getting on it as always. That's terrific. Mm. Yeah. With help. And do you still need volunteers? Should we be asking people for Yes, I I always people? need volunteers. Uh, okay. we're pretty much done with the Island Pond and Hacker Wildlife Sanctuary work at this point, but we'll be moving on to some more uh, regularly scheduled trail maintenance mm -hmm. kind of things mm -hmm. at Coysbrook Woodlands and uh, Cold Brook Preserve. So. Yeah, okay. any interested folks could visit our website, harwichconservationtrust.org, and there's a volunteer tab they could click okay. to submit a volunteer interest survey. Excellent. And that'll uh, come right to us and we'll set up meetings. Then you get yeah. together with them mm -hmm. figure yeah. out how mm -hmm. they can help. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And so. speaking of volunteerism, we have our annual um, right. Coast Sweep Beach Cleanup oh, event yes. coming up in that's September. It's a great day. So that's a great group volunteer activity that's yeah. in the morning. And, and the date on that is September 21st, Tyler? Yep, so uh, Coast Sweep this year is going to be September 21st, um, and so check-in will be at 9.30 uh, right here at the Community Center. A mm -hmm. um, little bit more details will be forthcoming, but save the date. Um, it'll be 9.30 to about 11.30. So, um, and can you just say quickly which areas, which beaches you'll be at? Um, yeah, every public beach in town. Okay. Um, town landings. Uh, mm -hmm. We go to Bell's Neck also. Mm -hmm. Coast Sweep is a program that is coordinated by the Massachusetts uh, Coastal Zone Management Office. Um, it's part of an international ocean cleanup mm -hmm. um, organized by the Ocean Conservancy. Uh, so we are just doing our small part here in Harwich mm -hmm. uh, this year. Um, there are a group of AmeriCorps alumni from AmeriCorps Cape Cod mm -hmm. who will be coming that day also, um, and they'll be dispersing throughout the mid and lower Cape to clean up some other beaches also. So I was particularly interested, do you do Pleasant Bay or do they have their own um, Pleasant Bay Association? Maybe they do their own thing there. Do you do, you do the coastal sweep on Pleasant Bay anywhere? Because there, there is some Harwich. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, Harwich coastline there. Yeah, very little. Um, mm -hmm. But we could send people down into mm -hmm. Chatham to the to the boat landing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I see. Okay, sure. okay, just curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's okay. a fun event. It's a very it fun is, event. It is. It is. Yeah, we've done some of those cleanups in the past. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tangible results. Mm -hmm. You can really see how it makes a difference. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. do you do the weighing? The weighing of the stuff. Uh, we don't. We don't weigh it. But okay. when people collect their litter, they actually categorize it on a form that mm -hmm. the state see, gives us right, right. and all that data um, is compiled throughout the world yeah. and you can see what kind of litter impacts are happening around the world on beaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that has an overall impact. It's great. Yeah, it's a great uh, partnership event with not only the Town Conservation Department but mm -hmm. the Town Harbor Master's Office and the Town mm -hmm. Highway Department. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And the okay. state. And the state. So again, yeah. people register through your website. Yeah, okay. harwichconservationtrust.org. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they can also maybe just show up, or would they be best to register ahead of time? Yeah, welcomes are welcome. Yep. Okay. There'll be plenty of supplies, mm -hmm. and uh, All right. we'll get those beaches really clean. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, it benefits everybody, obviously. Yes, right. it does. Near yeah. and far. Sure. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and, and so we have a new land preservation project. I heard about that. Yes. Tell us, tell yes. us about uh, it, please. It's very exciting. So. Um, the Coysbrook Woodlands is uh, a, uh, you'll see a map soon of that site. There it is. In green is the area that has been preserved. 
starting in, in 1997, mm -hmm. there was the first 16 acre area mm -hmm. comprised of 11 lots that was acquired uh, through the trust's first fundraising uh, campaign ever for a land saving project. So donors uh, from across town and beyond um, came together to support that first 16 acre acquisition which really became the core of this growing um, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Then there were land donations to the north and then a couple more lots bought uh, to the south in the mid 2000s. And then there was this last lot that one in red you saw on the map, which is actually on your right of your screen in this beautiful um, panoramic uh, photo uh, taken by... gorgeous picture. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, taken by our volunteer photographer, Gus Romano. Um, and it's that last lot that's been out there, the last piece of the puzzle for the Coysbrook Woodlands um, Preserve. Uh, that's a, a view of the Coysbrook Woodlands uh, surrounding uh, near, near the lot. Uh, it's a beautiful trail system. You can walk through tall pines and oaks. You then open up into a, a sweeping marsh vista that extends out to the Herring River Marsh area. Mm -hmm. And it's named after Coy's Brook because Coy's Brook is, flows right by the area and it's the main tributary to the Herring River, which mm -hmm. we also know is a significant alewife uh, river herring spawning migra mm -hmm. migratory route. There are mm -hmm. cattails that you, that you see here in the marsh right, right off oh. the the lot short yeah just isn't it amazing he took all these on site that's a marsh friend which yeah. is kind of neat uh, it's a, a localized populations um, along coastal areas in the state not many of them but not rare either but it just underscores the need to protect their habitat they build their domed nests mm -hmm. in the brackish marsh mm -hmm. area in the cattails um, mm -hmm. maybe you know three or four three or four or more feet above the high water mark that was butterfly weed you just saw a moment before, and there's actually a monarch oh, yeah. caterpillar oh. in there. Oh. Because monarch caterpillars depend on milkweed alone for really? their sustenance. Really? Butterfly weed is a member of the milkweed family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was a fiddler crab. They're also there, right there along the shoreline, uh, making their burrows. That was a male fiddler crab you saw with an enlarged claw. Uh -huh. So uh, it was amazing that uh, Gus took all these photos right there on site, this one acre lot. Yeah. So diverse. It's packed in. Full it's of yeah, life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's wildlife excellent. variety and uh, wonderful. So many different it things. It is, yeah. isn't it? It's excellent. And it also, yeah. preservation of that lot will help protect mm -hmm. the visitor experience to the trail system. So, right. so you have established trails in that area. Yes. So yes. Right. So, yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful right. area. And um, so we're hoping to raise 180000 by December 31st. Okay. So folks can um, give right. us a call. Or visit the challenge is on. Website. That's yeah. right. That's right. And so. I know people have been generous in the past, so hopefully that will not be too hard to reach. Yes. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's that right. sort of, again, that last lot puzzle piece. Yeah. Yes. So stay tuned. Fabulous. Thanks for having us on. Well, thank you so much for coming in. This was mm -hmm. great. Thank you, Dinah. Yep. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is Dinah Lane from Harwich Channel 18. Thanks so much. And we thank Mike and Tyler for taking the time out to sit down with Dinah and uh, uh, bringing us up to date. And again, as always, the beautiful pictures. I know. I know you always mention them, but they are. They are. Breathtaking. Yeah, I used to uh, be quite into photography years I ago, remember. so I really appreciate what they're doing there. Yeah. And uh, they, they, just, uh, they, they just know how to take pictures. It's great. Uh, very nice and some great information, too. Um, you know, we've said it many times, but the Conservation Trust has really done a lot uh, to keep Harwich uh, the yes, town it that it is, really. Yes. Yeah, yep. they've done a lot. have them to thank. Yep. You have got some very important I do, there. I do. With the school season starting up, of course, fall is around the corner, and with fall comes Halloween. <laughs> the boutique costume donation drive is starting today. Donate your gently used Halloween costumes for kids in need. Kids can pick up their costumes on Friday, October 18th from 5 to 8 p.m., but we need donations for them to pick up. Everything will be free. For more information, you can contact the Harwich Community Center at 508-430-7568. And I have a few questions that possibly you might be asking, and I can answer them for you. What does gently used mean? Most Halloween costumes will show some minor signs of wear. However, we cannot use costumes that have prominent stains or tears. Remember that your donated costume is supposed to help a child feel special and confident on Halloween, so it should be in good shape. 
Do you take partial costumes or dress up accessories? Yes, as long as they are in gently used condition, they, we can always put random costume parts such as tutus, masks, or capes to good use. Always a good cape. Yes, you that's can always sure. build a good costume yeah, with that. Absolutely. <clears throat> Do I have to label or package my donated costumes? It's really helpful if you include a note with your costume that tells us the age it's appropriate for, what size it is, and what it's supposed to be, because sometimes it's hard to tell, <laughs> especially with the superheroes and princesses, etc. Including the costume's original packaging or a hanger and plastic garment bag makes it so much easier for us to store the costume, but we always accept good costumes without those items. If you have any costumes or costume accessories you have no more use for, please drop them off at the Community Center front desk. There's going to be a box marked for that purpose. And we thank you for your support in advance. And now, speaking of the boutique donation drive, the Halloween party is coming up. So mark your calendar for Thursday, October 31st at 4.30 right here at the um, Howard Community Center. There'll be trick-or-treating, food, crafts, parade, and prizes. A safe Halloween celebration, and it's free and fun for all. So there you go. Halloween's a coming. Oh boy, it's uh, it's amazing that we're talking about Halloween so I soon. Know, but I it's know, true. But it be, takes preparation. Yeah, and <clears throat> it does take preparation, <clears throat> and all of the sorting that takes place. Oh, I you know, know it's amazing. It, if folks just take the time to donate some of those mm -hmm. gently used uh, costumes or pieces of costumes, it would be very, very helpful. Yeah, it's really important because not every child can afford to have a costume that they'd like. And, you know, if you have one, possibly your child has outgrown it or um, maybe, you know, you just want to donate. And if you can, it would be very, very helpful yeah, and appreciated. You go into the store and see some of these new uh, costumes, you suffer sticker shock. I right? know, it's amazing. <laughs> The it's unbelievable. The princess's dresses alone. Oh, Holy my goodness. Moly. Yeah, you know, it's very, very <laughs> true. Okay, thanks, Eileen. <laughs> well, believe it or not, 44 years of the Harwich Cranberry Festival. <gasps> I can't believe it. 44 years? Yes. Wow. Cran Jam 2019 is, uh, is here. Uh, it's coming up Saturday, September 14th, to a uh, noon to 8 p.m., and Sunday, September 15th, noon to 3 p.m., so the lineup this year offers a combination of new and returning talent both days uh, of our arts and crafts fair and for the third year at our new location uh, behind the Harwich Community Center at 100 Oak Street and that's the best place to view the fireworks. So that's going to be really, uh, really great. We've yes. sat there and we that's, it's a wonderful thing them. to do. Yeah. Saturday the 14th <clears throat> will kick off around noon uh, with local favorites, uh, Bruce McLean and the Tornadoes, Cape Cod's legendary cyclones, uh, with the windswept sound of rock and roll. <laughs> that sounds good. Yes, especially, <laughs> especially thinking about what we went through last month. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting hour. language yes, they use Yes, I know, there. <laughs> I know. That's, that's what I was picking up on. That's right. <laughs> They'll be followed by the reggae and soul of Dirty Water Dance Band and Salsa Beat of Grupo Gazarza. Uh, concluding the Saturday lineup will be past favorites and multiple award winners, World Beat and Masters and Train from Martha's Vineyard. We've heard them and they're really yes, good. Yes, we have. You're right. Yeah. Uh, playing till dark when the fireworks begin. Uh, Sunday, September 15th, Craig Carter and the Hurricanes get underway at noon with their rock and roll blues and American groove. They'll be followed by Danielle Megaglia and the Glory Junkies. I don't remember. That sounds like a new one. Mm. Yeah. To uh, us anyway. To us anyway, with a blues rock vibe. Well, there's a, geez, there's music for everybody. Yes, there is. That's yeah. really good. Be very careful. Admission okay. is free. Donations are welcome. And uh, Cran Jam takes place rain or shine. Please bring a blanket or a chair to lounge in the grass or under the big tent. Bring your dancing shoes for the wooden dance floor. So these even the wooden dance floor. That's great. Food trucks will be on site. Beer from the local microbrewery Devil's Purse Brewing Company and wine will be available for sale and uh, on site to help support the cost of putting on this free event. More info, you can get more info at www.harwich cranberryfestival.com. And a special thanks 
to Community Radio WOMR 92.1 and WFMR 91.3, the Cape Cod Chronicle, Devil's Purse Brewing Company, and Bayside Tents for their support. So um, uh, they're also proud to announce the return of internationally acclaimed Child's Play Violin Ensemble. Mm. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, to our concert series as part of their final tour at the Monomoy Regional High School Auditorium. And that's, you can put this down in your calendar. It's uh, November 21st at 7.30 p.m. So that's sort of like a world tour for, the, for wow, this group, I think. that's amazing. Yeah. It's probably a fundraiser for the Cran. Exactly, Festival. exactly. Very good. So uh, Cran Jam 2019, lots going on. That's, that's for Here sure. Here it comes. Here it comes, that's right. <laughs> Our next piece uh, today, the Guild of Harwich Artists uh, with Chris Bank and Dinah. Uh, they're going to also talk about the events at Cranfest in a little more detail. So uh, let's take a look at that right now. Hello. I'm here with Chris Banks of the Guild of Harwich Artists. And she's come in to talk with us about a number of things that the artists are going to be doing over the next few months, starting with Make It, Take It which sounds really fun well, and uh, a great opportunity, similar to the thing that you did last, last year with the having everybody come and paint uh, the puzzle painting. Right. Although this is not one big painting, it's people experiencing lots of different types of media, right? Right. Yeah. Experience different kind of media um, in a short session and then having um, uh, become familiar with that medium and then moving on to the next is kind of like a uh, round robin mm. musical chairs you just <laughs> keep moving 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 and get the chance to try try all of these mediums and this gives you an opportunity to try it without having to put out an expenditure of brushes paints and all that you can make decisions um, such a great idea and get to take it home yeah. which is a wonderful right. thing. right and it's on September 14th which is the same day as the Cranberry Festival yes and it will be at the Community Center It'll be at the so Community Center be... in the all-purpose room okay so. great so it'll be located very easily from everything everybody will be able to do everything that day. that's right outside inside all different kinds of, of art it's fabulous yes. sounds so great okay and then what do you have up next? Well, we have up next, um, just to give you a, a, a roundabout what we do um, at the Guild, we try to uh, um, educate the community of people that are not artists and that would like to be artists or interested in art. So when we have our monthly meeting, the third Saturday of the month, we hire uh, demonstrators, artists that will come in and give you uh, a demonstration of what they do best. And in um, October, we have Robin Litwin demoing in caustic. And on November 16th, we have Carolyn Lit Twit Litwin, Litwin, Litwin yes, mm -hmm. doing oil sticks demo. Mm -hmm. And um, the, of course, December 6th is the Christmas stroll, so we mm. sell these little ornaments at uh, the Christmas stroll this particular year. We had been doing it in the past, and they're, they're very uh, fun. They're $15, and all proceeds go to a community, um, uh, community fund? Fund that, that mm -hmm. we choose. And oh, oh, oh yes. great. Um, so uh, th last year we did the Children's Fund, and this year mm -hmm. we did um, the Children's Fund again. The Children's Fund I love because I love them all, of course, but um, when children are in school and they are in need of something, a backpack or some supplies or a coat or whatever it is, um, the teacher or, or staff will identify them and this children's fund will anonymously supply that. And so they're not doing without. So, so it goes for that. a great cause. Yes. Yes, wonderful. And the Christmas stroll is the Harwich Port stroll it's yes. right through the main street of Harwich. right yeah. okay and we're located down at the chamber selling these okay well we may talk about that again before that happens that's on december 6th yes that sounds great okay and then other things are that you have your ongoing open painting classes which aren't really classes i guess right. they're more gatherings of right. artists Every Thursday, we have new members coming in, and they're a little unsure of themselves, and it's nice to be around like minds. And so Thursdays, and room two here at the community center, which is 
we love our community center. Um, we gather from one to four, and um, the experienced artist will be there, the newbies, it, you know, we mm -hmm. all gather, mm -hmm. and then we just help each other. If you want to be left alone, you're left alone. But if somebody says, will you help me critique this? Mm -hmm. And we just love to share. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be around yeah. other people yeah. that are... Yeah, it's a great way to meet other people right. who are doing the same kinds of or things. Or they're doing different a different medium. Yep. Different kinds yep. of things and so. getting inspired by one another. Right. Yep. Great. Good. Um, and that goes on every Thursday from yes. 1 to 4. All winter long. At the community center. Yes. It's such a great service. It okay. is. And it's, um, is there a cost for that? No. No, it's free. No. Extraordinary. Okay. Right. Great. So then, um, let's see, is there anything else you wanted to highlight? Yes. You well, in the, in the wintertime, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, in the summertime, we change from the, th the Thursdays indoors, and um, some of us paint outdoors plein air. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. that's um, coming to a kind of a close, because in the fall, it's, it gets nice, and, and we paint outdoors, and mm -hmm. so we do Thursdays as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, did we talk about the make and take it? No. Yes, we did. We did. But the okay. last Art in the Park is uh, oh, the 31st, right. yes. which is Labor Day weekend, Saturday. Right. Right. And that's a wonderful thing, if no one has been to that before. Yes. Definitely, it's something we that people Dome should do. We love Dome Park. Yeah, it's all different artists and sitting with their work and talking about their work and being able to buy their work if you wish. Mm -hmm. So it's a very cool thing, and it's right there in that triangle right. over, over near the Harwichport uh, Post Office, right? right? Post right. Office Square, I guess. And Saturday it will be um, 10 to 4. Saturday the 31st. Yes, Excellent. the 31st. Okay, great. Good. There. Good. And then, uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, oh I yes, did. You have, you have a special um, thing with Vivian Oswell. Right. Oh, and before I forget the make it and take it, I do want to shout out to the uh, Harwich Cultural Council for um, supporting with a grant um, this uh, make it and take it event. So we mm. are very happy. Um, and moving on to Vivian Oswell. She is 96. She's one of our, I think she's the, one of the original uh, founders of our Art Guild. And um, she will be having a reception uh, September 19th, 4 to 6, it's a Thursday, at the Cape Cod Community Mediums, Media Center. She has all her art up and um, she'll be there Interview, interviewing and selling. We have a nice uh, video of her that uh, we'll be running. You can chat with her. She is such a knowledgeable lady, paints every day, amazing. That sounds absolutely great. And it'll be wonderful to have that uh, video too. Yes, yeah. yes. Ongoing, but it would be great to meet her in yes. person. She sounds like a great person. She's lovely. Okay, well, you have wonderful things uh, for people to engage in, and I'm excited about a number of them. Oh. And uh, so thanks so much, Chris, oh, for coming we, in. Oh, we do the tent? Did Ooh. you want to talk about the tent? Well, okay. yes, the Cranberry oh, yes. Festival, um, here we're having indoors the Make It and Take It, and then outside at the Cranberry Festival, we're going to have a tent to sell some more of these ornaments. Hmm. We, our artists went crazy and did so many uh, that we had, a f <laughs> so, you know, we sold a ton of them and then we had leftovers. And I said, okay, well, let's sell them in, in the summer. So we have a tent and we'll be selling some of these and some of our artists will bring a few things mm -hmm. to sell in the tent. Mm -hmm. So you can meet our artists, chat, and talk about right. whatever you like. Those are charming. Yes. And they can be used for all kinds of things. In yes. In spaces in your own house or as gifts. Yep. Yes. It's Beautiful. It's a great fun. idea. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, thanks again for coming. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it very much. And this thank is Diane Lane, Channel 18, Harwich. Thanks so much. Bye. They really have some very nice things uh, to offer. I know. Yeah, That's really exciting too. right and here it, at the community center, too. And it's too. nice to see organizations like that still alive because yes. many of them are not. I and, know. Uh, You're right. It, it's really nice to see that. And uh, we really appreciate uh, uh, Diner and Chris sitting down bringing us up to date. Mm -hmm. We have something here that I think you might be interested in. It's called Fall Frolic <coughs> with the Sound Dunes. And of course, we've mentioned them many, many times. Uh, enjoy live big band music, which you don't get very often today. Music, dancing, and refreshments with the Sound Dunes Swing Ensemble. And it's going to be taking place Friday, September 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. And this event is free. So where can you go to listen to a live swing band 
free. Not very many places, that's for sure. You're right. And uh, you, you, have to, uh, you do have to RSVP, however. Contact the Council on Aging at 508-430-7550. Or you can uh, reach uh, the head of the Council on Aging, Emily Mitchell, at emitchell at town.harwich.ma.us. Again, I think it's easier to call. <laughs> I always think so, but <laughs> it's good to have both options, yes, Jack. Yes, that's very, very true. Um, do you want to take that or do you want me to do this one? Um, why don't you go uh, ahead? Okay, I'll go ahead and do this one. Uh, September 11th, a day of service. Support our vets. Cape Cod Veterans Food Drive, August 14th to September 11th. Now, obviously, uh, uh, August 14th has gone by, but this is still going on until September 11th. All donations will benefit Cape Cod's veterans, and it's going to be taking place right here at the Harwich Community Center. They need, here are the things that they need. They need cereals, hot and cold, juice, apple, cranberry, and V8, toiletries, a toothbrush, toothpaste, shaving cream, razor, shampoo, canned tuna and chicken, canned soups, canned vegetables, toilet paper and soap, dish soap, gift cards, for Shaw's Stop and Shop and CVS gift cards. You know, this is really important because a lot of our vets are really strapped and they could use a little help, and this is a great way to help them. You can contact the Senior Corps RSVP program. <clears throat> for more information, call 508-394-4630, extension 520. Or you can go online to maryann.ryan at escci.org. And again, that's the day, of September 11th, a day of service, remembering our vets. And this is a great way to do that. It certainly is. And they do need our help, many of them. They sure do. Um, <coughs> Eileen, you have a very important announcement. I do, yes. I wanted to save it for last because it is another um, campaign, uh, collection campaign that I'm going to ask you to think about. Um, a 12-year-old boy from Harwich, Massachusetts, Cole experienced his first seizure two years ago. Diagnosed with intractable epilepsy, this spring and summer was extremely difficult for him with several hospital visits, including a 16-day SEEG. Like others with epilepsy, Cole's bravery and perseverance is tested minute by minute, day by day. He currently experiences one to three, sometimes five seizures a day. Six seizures in 12 hours this August landed him back in the emergency department at Children's Hospital in Boston for four days. This sparked the idea for the campaign I'm going to tell you about, Cole's Socks for Smiles campaign. Bedbound and monitored while in the hospital, Cole has benefited from games, activities, and distractions provided by the child life specialists at Children's. Free, colorful, and fun socks have been a welcome pick-me-up. <laughs> on his last day, however, there was only one pair of socks left in Cole's mm. size and only a few toddler sizes. Let's do something together to change that. Beginning September 1st, which is right around the corner, Cole Socks for Smiles campaign is collecting 500 pairs of new, fun, wacky, colorful socks for Children's Hospital in Boston. New and packaged socks for children of all ages, infant to young adult, can be dropped off at the Harwich Community Center right here or mailed to the center if you prefer. The donations will be delivered to Children's Hospital in Boston in early November. So you have some time, but start looking because you want to help put a smile on the faces of the brave children in the hospital this holiday season. And I think that's a wonderful Wow. Thing. So there's going to be a collection box in uh, the lobby here at the Community Center. And, when, you, when you're shopping for yourself or your children, especially, you know, for back to school or what have you, or for the holidays, yep. if you see a fun pair of socks, no matter what size, just bring it in. Just buy an extra package. Yes. Yeah, it's not that expensive. Yeah. No, they're and, not. Uh, you know, if it puts a, put a smile. smile. Yep. Exactly, yep. exactly. So uh, we wish Cole the best of luck. I know he's a fighter. Oh, and, he, he um, is. He's, he's an amazing kid. Yeah, he really is. And, um, you know, all the kids that suffer from the same thing that he does, uh, you know, if it puts smiles on their faces, You've done a wonderful thing. Yes. So please donate. Thank Very you. good. Well, folks, we just want to remind you that, of course, this being the Labor Day weekend coming up, 
Uh, the community center will be closed on Labor Day, and uh, there will be no show next week. Um, our show will be, this show will be broadcast its usual few days, and then no show the following week. So uh, we really appreciate you joining us on behalf of all of us here at Channel 18. We wish you a happy Labor Day. Yes, and please make it safe and make sure that you take advantage of everything going on around our town for the fall. Very good, Eileen. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.